Welcome to How to Cook That. I'm Anne Reardon and requests have been flooding in for a giant Ferrero Rocher recipe. We have been doing a giant chocolate bar series for a while now like the giant Snickers bar, the huge Kit Kat and the massive Twix bar and as usual we will give this one away at the end of the video to someone who is doing giant things for others so keep watching to see their reaction <laughs> at the end. The first thing we need is lots of chocolate and I'm using a mixture of milk and dark and then we're going to pour hot cream over the top so that that can start to melt the chocolate. Stir it around and at first it will look watery but then just keep stirring and the chocolate will combine with the cream. And all of the recipe quantities that you need for this recipe are on the website howtocookthat.net and I'll put a link to that recipe in the description just below this video. Now if you still have lumps of unmelted chocolate in your mixture then just microwave it for 20 seconds at a time or stir it over a double boiler until all that chocolate's melted and it's nice and smooth. Now if you want to you can add some Nutella to that and stir it through but don't over stir it because something in the Nutella starts to make the ganache split so stir it until it's just mixed in. Next take some waffle cones. Now they need to be the rolled waffle cones, not the molded cake cones. Quickly dip them in some water and shake off the excess. You don't want to soak them, you just want to quickly dip them in and pull them out and then place them back on your tray. Put those in the oven for about two minutes and when you pull them out they will be soft and you can unwrap them. Now I first discovered they did this and went soft like this when I put some stale cones in the oven to crisp them up. Not the exact effect I was after but it's useful here. Now take a hemisphere cake pan and spray it with some cooking oil and cut a triangular wedge from one of your soft wafers and place it on the side of the tin. Keep adding more of those and let them overlap each other slightly so that we've got a bit of strength to that and then add a circle to the center. Place some non-stick baking paper loosely around the top edge and then rest a slightly larger bowl on top. Now this is going to hold the top of the wafers in place so they don't just fall down and collapse when they're in the oven. Put that back in the oven to crisp up and after about five minutes you pull it out of the oven and you can remove that bowl and the paper and you'll see the edges are crisp enough to hold their shape now but the bottom's still a little bit soft. So just place that back in the oven for a few more minutes without the bowl and then let that cool down. Now for the giant hazelnut centre. You'll need sugar, egg whites, hazelnuts, icing sugar and hazelnut meal which is just finely ground hazelnuts. Add the egg whites and the sugar into a bowl and beat on high speed until the egg whites are firm. They should be firm enough that you can turn the bowl upside down without it falling out. Sift the hazelnut meal and the icing sugar on top and you're going to need a coarse sieve for this. If you use one of those really fine ones, it's not going to go through. You'll be there for hours. Then you want to fold that in just using a spatula. And when I was developing this recipe, it took me a while to decide what to use for the center of this Ferrero Rocher because they, of course, have one hazelnut in it, but I can't buy a giant hazelnut. So this is going to give us the hazelnut flavor and the crunch that we need to the middle of our giant one. Now in a smaller hemisphere pan, add some of that mixture, top it with some of your hazelnuts and then more mixture and smooth it off on the top. And we want to just bake that in the oven until it's cooked through. Now our cone lining is cooled and crisp and now pour in the cooled hazelnut ganache over the top. Once that is full and you've leveled off the top, then we're going to put that in the fridge for about three hours for it to firm up. Tip the two halves of the crunchy hazelnut center out of the mold and now that our ganache is firm place one on top and trace a line around it using a knife and then scoop out some ganache to make a hemisphere indent the right size for our pretend hazelnut. Push the hazelnut into place and make sure it's all level. Now run a knife gently around the top edge to loosen that ganache from the top of the tin. Don't push your knife further down because you've got the wafer there and we don't want to break it. Just do the very top edge. Then place some baking paper over the top, followed by a tray and flip the whole thing over. Now gently lift off the tin and then of course you need to make another one of these because you need two halves. 
place one half of your Ferrero Rocher onto a glass and put the glass onto a plate and pour over that a little bit of tempered chocolate and spread it out using a palette knife. Now we only want this to be a fairly thin layer. Then sprinkle hazelnut pieces over the top before it sets, making sure they don't just go to the top, make sure you add some to the sides as well. Now clean all those hazelnuts off the plate and then pour over a generous amount of tempered chocolate. Now if you're using real chocolate with cocoa butter in it like I am here then you're going to need to temper your chocolate or it will not set firm to touch at room temperature. If you're not confident in tempering then you can just use compound chocolate but it won't taste quite as good as this one does. Try to cover all the gaps as you pour it on. If you still have gaps, take a spoon and using chocolate off the plate, just add more so that all of those gaps are covered and the hazelnuts are all sealed in. And repeat that with your second half. Once the chocolate is set, place one half onto the cake tin to stop it from rolling away and then add some more chocolate around the edge there and then add your second half, gee, this is heavy, on top. Now, if you have some gaps like I do, just spread some more chocolate into those gaps so it's completely sealed. And this Ferrero Rocher is rather giant compared to the original. Now, we want to surprise someone who is doing giant things for others. So let's wrap it up nicely in some gold wrapping paper, tape it at the top and flip it over once you're done. Next, take some brown card with a stripe of masking tape on it and fold it back and forth and back and forth, making even folds. And then squeeze it so you've got nice firm folds there and then open it up and wrap it around the base of your chocolate and use some glue to secure that into place. Well, I've packaged this all up in a box and flown on a plane to Melbourne. I've literally just got here, driven straight from the airport because I wanted to introduce you to some more amazing people. I've got here with me today Justine. And Justine and a group of her school friends have started a company. Now, is the company named Thank You Water or just Thank You? Thank You Group. Thank You Group. Yeah. And can you explain a bit about how it all got started? How old were you when it started? Sure. I myself was 21. Um, and Daniel um, was 19 and so was Jared, our co-founder, um, was also 19. Um, and we started because we were just looking at, I guess, the reality that here in Australia we spend $600 million on bottled water. Wow. Yet at the same time in developing countries and around the world there's 900 million people who don't even have access to water. And so we wanted to try and find a way to, um, I guess, use the surplus profit that we have here in our country to be able to help those people who really need it the most. The most. And so you did that by starting a bottled yeah. water company. Yeah. So we yourself. started off as water. Yes. And that's why you said thank you water to yes. start with. So the first few years we were, we were thank you water. And then we went and just recently, last year, we've launched a food range. The food range funds food projects. Right. So we do long-term and short-term um, aid relief. Awesome. Um, and then we also have the hand wash. Um, so we've got a hand wash and lotion, sanitizers, and they fund hygiene and sanitation. Wow. And cool. how did a group of essentially straight out of school kids yeah. do something this amazing? How did you get started and get from there? to now yeah well I can't say we did it overnight <laughs> it's definitely been a, a very hard journey over the last mm. six years Can you we give would... us some of your stats of where you're at now where the company's grown to yeah sure mm. with the water we've been able to help provide over a hundred and six thousand people receive access to safe water that's amazing. and that's over the six years mm. um, for our food that's just been going for a year we've been able to help um, 3.8 million servers of food wow. provided um, and with the um, body care range we've been able to help 112,000 people receive training for hygiene and sanitation. Oh, that's awesome. So, and on the back of your bottle you've got this weird little number. What is that for? Can you explain okay. that? This was a lot of work we put together. Mm. So we felt it was really important that people knew exactly where their money's going. Because you know sometimes you buy something and you're like, but where does it actually really go? Did it actually go to the people? Yeah, who need so we've, it? Yeah. We've, we've put this program called Track Your Impact Together. Mm. So how it works is um, every single product has a unique code. Not one is the same. Right. So it's not like a barcode. Everything's different. And when you put that into our online system that we have, you'll be able to see exactly which 
project that this product has been assigned to fund. So you'll see it. the GPS coordinates, you'll see um, what the solution is, what the problem was, and how you're being, you know, a part of making a difference in the world. That's awesome. Um, oh, that is such a cool <laughs> idea. I love that. I love the way you can track where yeah. your money's gone. On How to Cook That, we have a special way of saying thank you to people that we think are doing an amazing job and doing something great. So we have this box here. You may need your team to help you, but how about you open it first and okay. then you can call them over if you think you might need help. Sounds good. I think you'll need By the scissors. size of it, it looks like I might need help. It actually weighs six kilos because oh, we had to wow. weigh it at the airport. Cut down this one. It's exciting. We'll this it's one like on. Christmas all over again. Okay, are you ready? Oh you're my gosh. A six kilo. Oh my gosh. Joking? What is that a fee? Six kilos. Oh, oh, hey. oh. oh, oh my god! You're amazing! Wow! Yeah. What's wow. inside? Oh. 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 Amazing! Fight Just take that a bite. <laughs> I can't even. Wow. Subscribe to How to Cook That for more cakes, chocolates and desserts. Click here to see the other videos on this channel and make sure you also check out Thank You Group's YouTube channel. Their products are currently only sold in Australia, but if you live elsewhere, you can subscribe to their channel for updates on when they will be near you. I hope you're inspired to do giant things. Have a great week and I'll see you all on Friday. This tastes like all my childhood memories coming true. Oh. Oh.